Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we are creating football application using React.js and the football standings API. Let's jump straight into the demo so that you can see what we are going to build now. So the application we are going to build is very simple. We will have two tabs, leaks and standings. Uh, under leaks tab, we will see information coming from the football standings API. With the different leagues from the world, we can see English Premier League, Bundesliga, French League and all the other major leagues in football. Right here, if we go to standings, we will see the standings for the English Premier League right now at the moment. We can change the year, we can see standings from past years as well. And we can also select different league and we can see the updated uh, standings for that leak. I hope you found the demo interesting. Before we start creating this application, this is your first time right here. My name is Yusman. I'm a self-taught web developer and I make tutorials about web development. And if that's something that really interests you, I recommend you to subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Recommend to friends, of course, and become part of this expanding family of React.js and front-end developers. Let's now open VS Code and start creating this application from scratch. All right, I have uh, created a brand new project using MPX Create React app, and I have started my server on port 3000. And here is what React.js gives us out of the box. Um, let me quickly open a terminal and I will be installing a couple of dependencies we will need to create this project. So first of all, I need to CD into this folder right here. So I'm going to say CD football app version two, and I'm going to say NPM install Axios. And I will hit enter and that will install Axios for me. We will need the Axios library in order to fetch the data from the API. And meanwhile, let me show you what we will need else. We will need this react loader spinner component package, which we'll install as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this command right here and I'm gonna paste it after Axios is downloaded. All right, Axios is installed right now. And let me paste the other command. So npm install react loader spinner dash dash save and hit enter and that will install this for me. And we can see that our package.json file was modified and inside dependencies, we have Axios and we will have also the spinner any moment after it's installed. Uh, now we can begin by clearing the app.css file. So everything inside app.css, we will delete that and we will do our own styling. Inside app.js, let's quickly remove everything inside this header and leave it like that. And we won't need this logo right here. So let's quickly remove this and create a folder inside the source folder called components. So I'm going to say components and inside this folder, I will create navbar.js. I will create footer.js. Uh, we will have also content dot js. Let's start with the navbar. I have been using very nice shortcuts. You can install them from the extensions. Uh, it's called react.js snippets. So I'm going to type RAFCA and that's going to generate a functional component for me. And for the class name here, I will give it a class name. So I'm going to say class, come on, class name will be content dash container. Okay. And for the nav bar, I'll do the, I'll do the same. So R A F C A 
and that will be with the class name of navbar and for the footer as well and that will be the class name of footer okay let's also bring the app.css so i'm going to say import dot dot slash app css and i'm going to copy this line and i'm going to paste that also inside the content and also the navbar because we will be using that and inside the app let's now bring those components so i'm going to say import nav navbar from dot slash components navbar import footer from dot slash components footer by the way let's save let's save everything and bring them here in the app.js import content from dot slash components content all right okay with that let's open the navbar and here let's just say h1 so h1 football app and let's get the emoji so i'm gonna say football emoji and copy this so i'm gonna copy it and come back and paste it right here just like that and save this and for the footer we will have a paragraph saying football app 2021 um ampersand copy and i will save for the content we will leave it like that for the moment and here inside this div with the class name of app we will say navbar with the self-closing tag and we will copy that and we will do the same for content and the same for footer okay hit save and if i save this and open the browser right now we should see our navbar I reload this and we can see our navbar right here in the footer great uh, let's start styling this a little bit so we can uh, so we can uh, see better our structure and our components all right so inside the app.css I'm gonna say star box sizing to be border box and I'm gonna say margin zero and padding padding okay my keyboard is okay i don't want to type the square brackets <laughs> padding zero okay padding zero let me just make the microphone a little bit uh yeah so padding zero this is a basic reset we are doing and we'll start with the navbar so navbar we will then have the footer okay and we will also have the content container so let's do content container just like that so the navbar will have a width of 100 percent a height of 10vh i'll give it a background color of hexadecimal 
zero 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 which is black I'll give it a color of hexadecimal FFFFF which is white I will say display flex align item center justify content center and text align center to center everything I'm gonna save now and I'm gonna I'm gonna open the browser and we can see our now bar right here great let's now come back here and do the same for the footer so just copy and paste those styles right here for the footer and save and we should see the footer with the same styles great let's come back and give this content container which will hold our tabs and the content itself between those components navbar and footer let's give that a height so i'm gonna say width first 100 percent and height of i'll give it a min height so min height of 80 viewport height so we have 10 viewport height for the navbar 10 viewport height for the footer and the remaining of the 100 is 80 so i'm giving this to the content container okay let me save this and we will see now that we have a division between the navbar and the footer okay now let's start with the content of the content.js component right here. So what we will have right here? Well, we will have switch, switch components. We will have two divs which will be switching to show the, the leaks and the standings. And I will create this right now. So I'm going to say div div with the class name of taps so i'm going to say taps and inside this taps we will have two divs first one will be div with the class name of tap dash leaks and the second one will be with the class name so I'm gonna say class name of tab standings all right and here we will have h1 actually it will be h2 so h2 leaks and similarly he will have h2 right here and I'll say standings just like that after i save this we should see leaks and standings right here all right let's come back and start styling this a bit so first of all our content container will have a display of flex align items of center and flex direction of column now if I save and come back we will see that they move to the center however our our elements are inside another div inside content container which is tabs so I'm gonna style this as well so I'm gonna say dot tabs and this one will be with uh, display of flex flex direction row width of 100% align item center and justify content center let me save this and come back and we can see that now they are next to each other and we can give also a little bit of margin right here so i'm going to say margin 
20 pixels, 0, so 20 pixels top and bottom, and 0 left and right. And we can save now, and we can see that they moved down. Actually, we can increase a little bit more. Let's say we can say 50, just to have some more space. And we can see now that they, that they moved. All right, now we can also give them a, a fixed width. So I'm going to say, now we can also give them a fixed width. So I'm going to say, tab leak. Was it tab leak? Tab leaks and tab settings. So tab leaks and tab settings. Let me make this smaller. Just like that. And here we will say width. Each of them will have a width of 300 pixels for both of them. 300 pixels. Let me just copy this. So they will be with display flex, align item center, justify content center. justify content center and let's save and see what we have we have right here this all right we have to give the color so background background color of black and color of white just like that I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this for the tab leaks as well. When we save now, we will see that, okay, something is wrong. Tab leaks, tab leaks, tab leaks. Okay. What's wrong here? Let's see. Hmm. It's, I think this is correct. So tab leaks. Let's save. Okay, this is correct, but I tab settings. No, it's not tab settings. It's tab standings. Okay, tab standings. Okay, let's save now and see. And now we have them in black background. Let's also give them a height. So height of 50 pixels and height of 50 pixels, just like that. Save, come back and we can see them. And let's give a border to the leaks one. So leaks border right. So border right, maybe one, maybe five pixel solid. Uh, solid CCC, which is gray. Save and come back and see. Okay, we have a border right here. That's fine. And now what we have to do, we have to create the leaks component and the standings component. So I'm going to do that right now. Inside the components folder, I'm going to create leaks.js and I'm going to create standings.js. I'll generate my content and I'm going to give this a class name of leaks container. And for the standings, I will give this a class name of standings container just like that all right and now inside our let me close the navbar and footer inside the content.js let's bring those components so i'm going to say import leaks and i'm going to say import standings and we will also need 
couple of React hooks right here. I'm going to say use state. So import React, use state from React. And here we'll have a local state, which will be const active set active to be use state true initially. And you'll see what I mean by true because we will give this uh, tab leak. We will give it a default value of true so that when we load the when we load the page, it will be on leaks by default. You will see how we will do it right now. Uh, okay, so we have imported the use state. We have uh, declared our piece of state right here. What we have to do now? Well, whenever we click on that tab, diff class name with the tab leak, we can say on press or on click. And we can fire a function and we can say set active to be true. And for this one right here, we can say on click set active to be false. And right here, below this div with the class name of tabs, we can open curly braces and we can say, if it's active, show the leaks component. So leaks just like that, else show the standings component. So I'm going to say standings just like this. Now, if we save this, if we save this right now, and if we just display something right here, we can say leaks. And we can also say standings and save. You will notice that whenever I load the page, it will show me leaks by default. But if I click on this, it will show standings. This means that it, it is loading the standings component. And when we click on leaks, it's loading the leaks component. And that's the behavior we want. And now let's come back right here and do some little bit of stuff here. Uh, replace the color of this when it's active and it's not active. So we can do um, H2 inline style, so style, and we can say color. So the color when it's not active, when it's not active, I want a hexadecimal value of C2114. Which is red. Else. I want null. And the same here. However, it will be with active class. So. I'm going to copy this. Copy right now and paste it right here. Oops. So I'm going to paste this right here. I'm going to say when it's active, give this to me. And now if we save that and we come back, we can see that the color is red. And when I click on this, the color here becomes red. All right. That's amazing. What we have to do now, we have to display the leaks which we will fetch from this API. This API can be found in GitHub. It's called Azrahim Football Standings API. I found this very nice API. It's free for usage and it's very simple. And now you will see how we will use that. Well, basically we have a couple of endpoints right here. Uh, a couple of get endpoints, API Football Standings, uh, that's that site slash leaks, which, which is giving you the uh, data with the leaks. Uh, here you can grab a leak detail if you provide the name of the leak. 
and if you can also you can also get the seasons and you can also get the standings we will be using only only leagues endpoint and this standings endpoint but of course you can try the other ones and you can expand this application and you can make it even bigger um, now inside the leaks component we will start with the logic to display to display the different leaks we have I'm gonna copy this endpoint right here and I'm gonna open my VS code and I'm gonna load the leaks.js component here I will import use state and use effect from react and here I will also import the style.css so I'm gonna say dot slash app.css just like that and I will also import axios from axios all right and here I will say const data set data to be use state an empty array by default and now how we will fetch the data well when the component is loaded I'm gonna say use effect which means that this side effect will run when the component is mounted I will say use effect and here I will do the following I'll say axios I'll provide the endpoint here and I'll say dot then so we are making an axios call to this endpoint and we can say response and we can console lock the response to see what we have from the data so I can say response dot data right here and now if we save this and come back to the browser and open our inspect tools right here and go to the console we will see that we have an object which is holding the data we need so we can see 20 elements array of 20 elements holding our data and we have a couple of key value pairs here we have name and logos and very useful stuff which we'll be using now our data is inside this data key so we have to say console log raise that data that data and after that we can also say set data we can set the data to the same so response that data that data and right here we'll have this leak container and we can directly say curly braces data.map we will have data right here okay it's not the way this is always arguing with me so we have to do like this like this and then do this and we will be it will be satisfied like that and here we will map to the data and we will output another div and for the key of this I'm gonna give it data dot let's see what we can get data dot uh, id data dot id so i'm gonna say data dot id just like that i'm gonna give this a class name so i'm gonna say class name of um the parent is leaks container let's say leak diff leak dash diff or something like that and right here inside this div we will have an image 
the self-closing tag and we'll say source to be data dot logos dot dark so data dot logos dot dark just like that and below we will have an h h1 and we will say for this one name so we'll get the name key right here so i'll say data dot name just like that so it's complaining because we also need to provide an alt tag right here so i'm going to provide hash for this and i'm going to save and i'm going to come back and we will see all the pics and the names of the of the different leaks right here however some of them are not loading the images which means that somewhere some logos are broken so we will use we will use the light one so logos.light because i have tested this before and i am sure that there are no problems with that so i'm going to say light right here so i'm going to say light and i'm going to save come back and now all the logos are displayed and that's what we want okay we have this container we have the logic working still if we go to standings we can see that uh, we see the standings content but when we have to, when we come to leaks we see the leaks content successfully now let's style this so let's come back to vs code and here we have leaks container so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna go to my app.css and let's say right here i'm gonna say dot leaks container so this container will have a width of 100%. Um, it will have a display of grid. Grid template columns will be repeat uh, for, let's say, we have 20 results, which means we can have 5 1FR like that. Or maybe we can try with four one fr let's see we can say justify items to the center and uh, let's see what we have um we also have leaks container but we also have um, leak diff and we have image inside so we can say we can copy this leak diff right here let's say dot leak diff and we can point to the image directly and we can say width of 250 pixels now if i save this and come back to the browser we should see them in a grid view just like that okay um, what we can do more, we can say if I item center text align cent text align center. So text align center. Okay, save. Come back. Now they are centered. And we can give some kind of let's say margin between those, the top and the bottom of the, the, the different diffs right here. So I'm going to say leak diff, so leak diff margin, let's say 20 pixels top and bottom and zero left and right. Save this, come back and now we can see them uh, with a little bit of margin between them. We also need to provide that hovering effect. So when, when, whenever we hover on the diffs, we need to scale them. So let's do that right now. So we can say leak diff on hover. We can say transform, translate. No, my mistake, sorry. Transform scale 1.1. 1 
if we save now and come back if we hover over them we can see this nice transition happening okay all right so the leaks component is done and now we can we can concentrate on standings uh, we can see how many we have here argentina Liga Profesional de Football, Australian A-League, Brazilian Serie A, Chinese Super League, Premier League, my favorite one, also with uh, La Liga, and we also have Turkish Super League, great, we have 20 leagues, so now let's create the standings component, alright, so for this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this content for the moment, we are done with it, I'm going to close app.js and I'm going to go to standings component right here. Well, for the standings, we will need also use state hook. So I'm going to say use state and also the use effect hook. We will also need the spinner right here. And if you check the docs right here, it says import required CSS. So I'm going to copy this and you will see how we will use the spinner later. Okay, so I'm gonna paste that right here and I'm gonna also paste this import loader from React Loader Spinner. Just to have them in advance. Here inside the standings component, I'm gonna declare a local state again. So I'm gonna say const data set data to be equal to use state of empty array and now we have to create our select drop downs which we will have right here and to do that what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say return like that I'll provide brackets right here and standings container will have another div inside it which will be with the class name of select select container let's say we will also have another div which will hold our standing results and that div will be with the class name of standing results just like that so right now in order to save some time what i will do inside the select container i have created this select txt file and I will drop that in the description below the video so that you can use it as well to save you some time. So I'm gonna copy the whole code right here from this file and I'm gonna paste it inside this select container diff. I'm gonna hit prettify and you can see right here that I also have a selected ear and set selected ear a constant and a function and we also have selected leak and set selected leak which we have to declare right here so i'm going to say const selected leak set set selected leak to be equal to use state and that by default will be by default will be this value right here because we want the English Premier League to be the default selected one. So I'm going to say English that one right here. And I'm going to say const selected ear and set selected ear. And that one will be use, will be equal to use state. So use, come on, use, ah. <laughs> you state okay 2021 by default all right 
So what's happening right here? We have the selects, we have the values, we have given a default value of the selected ear right here for the for the, for the select that holds the ears. And we have given a default value of selected leak right here, which holds the different leaks. And if we save now and come back to the browser and we load this component, we will see see what's happening it's loading so leaks are here and standings we have these select drop downs amazing let's style them a little bit so let's say just select and let's give this just a padding of 10 pixels and maybe um, a font size of 19 pixels just like that let's save and see what we have okay there are bigger and we can see that we have the uh, selected English Premier League by default and we also have this ear selected by default now what we need to do we need we have those required uh, stuff to in order to fetch the data so to fetch the data you can see this endpoint right here which is uh, happy football slash standings that site leaks English that one Obviously, this is the selected value of the select component that holds the different leaks. Standings, question mark, season 2020. So we can, let's say we can copy it up to right here because we don't, we won't be doing any sorting or stuff. So I'm going to copy this up to right here and inside my standings, I will do the following. I'll say use effect. So use, use effect, I will run a site effect every time we update those selected leak and selected ear. And that way, every time we'll fetch new data. But before that, we also need to bring Axios. So I'm going to say import Axios from Axios. And here I will do the following. We'll have an original piece of state. I'll say const loading and set loading to be equal to use state and that will be false by default. And right here inside the use effect, I'm going to first say set loading to be true. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to say Axios. I'm going to paste this. However, I will do backticks and I'm going to paste this right here which I copied from the website from github and here I will replace this value with selected leak so selected leak and this season right here with selected ear just like that then you will see that use effect complains because it needs those dependencies and if we provide them this effect will run every time they change and that's the goal we want so selected ear and selected leak just like that now after that we will have dot then we will have the data with the response with the data so i'm going to say response and i'm going to say console log res.data just like that and we will also have let's say we have an error we can say catch error and we can say console log error and finally we can say dot finally when we have everything fetched we can say set loading to be false and do something below right here okay all right now let's see what we have let's save this and come back to the browser and open the react app right here we'll have to change the title as well i will do that in a moment hit the inspect tool and go to the console and we can see 
we have an object with the English Premier League and we can we have a standings key which is an array of elements and we can see right here we have a team and we can see that Manchester City were on the first place because they are on the zero position we see stats we can see how many how many wins they have how many how many loses how many ties games played etc and we can see different values right here so we need we need that standings array we need the data from this standings array we don't need anything else so let's come back right here and say res that data so console log res that data that data that standings just like that and also say set data res that data that data that standings so we are populating our data with with the standings and if we save now and come back we will see that we are directly getting the standings data from we are directly getting this inside our console lock and we are populating our variable data with that data okay now let's uh, display the spinner so to display the spinner we will do the following we will we will copy we will copy this let's say which one which one mm, three dots not three dots we don't want three dots or let's say this one three dots okay three dots loader and we can do a check right here so open curly uh, open brackets and say if it's loading we want to display this loader else if it's not loading we want to say data that map and we can say data right here oops so data and we can output another diff right here which i'm gonna give a key so i'm gonna say key of index or maybe for the key we can use something else from the data we can let's say we can use data that team that id maybe so key data that team that id for the key and let's see the let's see the loader right now we should see a loader when we display that okay you see, there was a loader and we saw it for a moment but it's not centered so we will do that any moment however i don't like this three dots let's uh let's maybe get the loader which is type rings instead of three dots so let's say rings let's see how this looks rings come back okay this looks better to me and you can maybe increase the height let's say 120 and width 120 and save come back and we can see this loader a lot bigger all right now let's display our stats let's display our standings right here all right so what we need to do well we have our team right here And we also have logos, an array of logos. 
And what we will do now, we will do the following. Inside this div, which I'm going to give a class name of standing info, standing info div, right here, I will do an h1. So I'm going to output an h1. And inside this h1, I will have a span. And inside this span, I will output with backticks the following. I will say index plus one because we are starting from the zero and we need to display them like from the first position. So index plus one. And here we will say dot. Then we will have an image with the source of so image with the source of we'll say alt first hash and the source of this will be data dot team dot logos from zero just like that. And let's see. So data dot team dot logos from zero dot ref. All right. And after this pan, we will say data. Oops, not Safari. So data data dot let's see data dot team however Yeah, it's display name. I was looking for short name, but I cannot see it at the moment. Oh, there is short display name. So we will need this short display name. Uh, I'm going to say data dot team short display name, just like that. Let's see what we have now. If we save and we open. load we should see our standings from that year let's quickly style this so to make it a little bit uh, better come back right here what we have we have standing results and standing info diff um, Standing results. I'm going to copy this right now. And I'm going to say, let's say before the footer, dot standing results. And we also have standing info diff. So let's copy this as well and say dot standing info div image width of 30 pixels let's say if we do that the image will be smaller and we will see this any moment let me reload the page and go to the standings but it's not why is this let's come back and check why this is happening. Standing info diff. Standing info diff. All right, what we can do, we can do the following. We can um, delete this. 
can delete this and we can also I tried something else but it didn't work and I don't know why I don't I don't want to waste some time so let's also let's um, save this right now uh, and in the standings.js let's do an inline styling so style uh, will be um, width and we will give let's say 30 pixels right here for the image and when I do this we will notice that uh, we will have the images much smaller as we want them and we just need to move the content of this to the center and to do that uh, we will do the following uh, we will say standing results uh, we will we will just say uh, display to be flex and align items to be center and flex direction to be column and let's save now maybe also do text align text align center and save and come back and we will see um, that they move to the center as we want um, let's also give some distance between them um, I'm gonna do the following I'm gonna say uh, for each standing info diff I'll say margin of 20 pixels top and bottom and zero left and right come back right here and now we can see uh, that they are in the center and there is distance between them now we can try our API we can hit 2019 and we can see that the information right here is changing we can hit for 2015 and we can also see the standings for that particular year we can also go to Spanish Premier Division and we can see that Barcelona won yeah Barcelona won and we we can see for this year right now Real Madrid is the first oh my god don't hate me Real Madrid fans don't hate me I also like Real Madrid they play good football uh, but I'm fan of Barcelona more so we have a super nice application working at the moment we have we have done so much we have learned how to use this api how to use the react loader spinner component and we have created an amazing application so this is what we have created today guys thank you so much for watching first of all if you did enjoy the video make sure you like it and you subscribe also to the channel make sure you recommend to a friend and become part of this expanding family of react.js front-end developers thank you so much for watching again and see you again in the future all right i have uh, 